Hey everybody, it is Thursday, September 8th, 2011, This Non-Religious Life. Today we're going to be talking about moral values in the Bible, and you get to watch Jason and Bob get into it over slavery. This guy out here. I thought I was a good Christian. Hey everybody, it's September 8th, This Non-Religious Life. I'm your host, Ken. Today we have Jason and Bob. <laughs> I totally that. phoned to the wrong person. <laughs> I just went this way to point um, to both of you, Bob. but I realized that <laughs> I turned to Bob more. <laughs> well, hello everyone. <laughs> I am Bob. Right? I'll do slightly more uh, <laughs> correct pointing. We're leaving that in, right? Yep. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Um, yeah, if they left in my gross sneeze... <laughs> This is the type of show you're uh, going to get this evening. Yes, you will. <laughs> um, this is why the survey is so important. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, just a, a note to everyone who's watching. Um, we have a survey up on the site. So when you go to zombiepopcorn.com, you can go to the right-hand side, and there's a little survey on the show. We want you to fill out what show you're watching, um, what you like, what your feedback is. I haven't looked at the survey yet. Um, Jason just told me about it this morning, but um, it'll help us grow the show. Uh, we'll get advertisers that are pertinent to what we're doing, um, and then maybe we can make some money, get a little more production value. I've looked at the survey. I haven't. I just found out yeah. about it today. I even took the survey. Awesome! Yay! Yeah. Which which was a little a little bit of a pain in the ass, but it's not that hard. It's, <laughs> you know, it's not that difficult. You just, you, you just totally discouraged everyone. Now. No, right. no, it it, it yeah. it'll, it'll, it's a value to us, and it only takes a few minutes of your time, yeah. and it's not that hard. And they don't, yeah. and it helps. It helps. It helps us make better it'll shows. Help us and uh, get yeah. pertinent advertising. So yep. Um, but today we're going to be talking about um moral absolutes in the bible and this uh bob actually put this up pointing to the right person right yes mm -hmm. <laughs> uh bob put this up um in our show notes uh this morning and it's uh it was this essay by uh rabbi eric h yofi and he, he's essentially talking about like like how he finds that like moral he gets his moral um compass from the bible and it's like the bible is morally absolute and, you know, he, he rails a little against what he calls relativists, um, which I call realists. Um, and he, but he, he, he waffles. And, and Bob and I were talking about this before the show. Like, he'll say, the Bible is, you know, this perfect, you know, moral compass based on how I interpret it today. And tomorrow I might interpret it differently, but it's just as relevant. Well, you know, I, I think um, I, I think in his essay, and we should maybe post the link to it. It was in the Huffington yeah, Post, and it was his op-ed piece, and 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 he makes the statement that he derives his moral compass from sacred texts, and and he doesn't, and and, in, and, he, and he's pretty politically correct about it because he doesn't invalidate other people's sacred texts, um, although maybe the implication is there. I couldn't really suss that out of it, uh, but but then he goes on to say that 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 the Bible and he compares it to the Constitution, which I think is kind of an I don't know I think it was kind of a bold statement on his part where he says like you know the Constitution is intentionally vague in parts mm -hmm. and um, and therefore is subject to interpretation and which is why we have a, uh, a a judiciary system and a Supreme Court who who make those interpretations and in but but I but I think the I think the comparison breaks down um, in that in that we have a system of of governmental checks and balances where the Supreme Court is appointed and approved 
and and these are people who um you know by our participation in government we we have allowed to sit in those chairs and make those interpretations for us yeah whereas you know anybody can can claim that they are the will of god and have interpreted the sacred text thusly and make any yeah. moral judgment they want and and then he goes on to talk of any any and i don't understand how he can have a discussion of moral absolutes and then at the very same time say but those absolutes are subject to change based on interpretation how do you how do you make that argument i don't know it, it, right, it, it was it egg for hub, hub right right yeah, <laughs> yeah right um i i mean he's He's Jewish, too, which gives him a little more leeway, like, when comparing it to the Constitution, because, like, in Judaism, they have the the oral Torah and the commentaries, like the Talmud, um, which is kind of like, it's very legalistic. It's very much like uh, like the Supreme Court ruling on things that are said in the Bible. So the Bible is kind of vague, but then you have, like, these crazy legalistic, um, like, interpolations that go into, like, every minute detail but like Christianity doesn't have that. Islam doesn't really have that. It kind of does, but not really. Um, you know, and I mean, other religions don't really have that. So like, like you said, any nut can be like, you know, this Christian crazy person who's like, oh, I've interpreted the will of God from the Bible and like, and be completely off. But I don't even think you have to be completely off to get crazy shit out of the Bible. That is just absolutely morally reprehensible. You know, like, I, I think, like, if you're going to try and draw, like, oh, this is a moral absolute right here. Um, and, and it's how he's doing it is he's saying he's, he's like, you know, uh, he quotes, where is it? Deuteronomy 13, 19, um, uh, which is the commandment to do um, that which is right in the eyes of the eternal. How do you figure out what's right in the eyes of the eternal? Well, just so happens that this book actually tells you what's right in the eyes of the eternal. It's. Well, I mean, that's that's convenient, and, and, and right um, to do what's right in the eyes of the eternal. I don't, I don't find anything. Um, I, I don't really find anything wrong in that, in that saying. Right? Yeah. I, that's great. Good. Do that. Do what you do. What is right in the eyes of the eternal. It's when you take the eyes of the eternal and be like, oh well, now killing babies is okay. The eyes of the eternal. You know, yeah. our divine being says that's all right now, so that's moral. That's the part that, it, that I think yeah. it, it breaks down. Yeah, and I mean, I'm I'm of two camps about morality. I think 99 percent of morality is fairly relative. It, it it's not just like social norms and stuff like that, but I mean, it, it's based on on nuances. Life is nuanced, you know. And, but I mean, there are other things that I believe that are fairly fairly objective you know um rape is always wrong genocide is always wrong um murder is mostly wrong well, I, extenuating circumstances you know yeah well right i mean those and 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 i don't i want to make one thing clear i don't pretend to know the answers to these questions yeah. i i really don't i was never uh you know never a philosophy major and i'm only just starting now to think about these things but oh okay right i'll say murder's probably wrong you know i yeah. I, I think that could be and then the, and he and he throws out the um the the real softball when he's always like killing babies is wrong i, I guess except when they're canaanites i don't know I mean, yeah right yeah is, is yeah. that and and um and that makes me think about william lane craig and um you know other other people in the fundamentalist camp where they they make the they they talk about moral arguments and and but then at the same time they they say like well because we're the creation of God and we have to abide by His laws then He's sort of outside of of morality. Yeah. Whatever He says is, it goes and it doesn't matter what it is that He says because it's it's sort of I don't know it sounds like a, a do as I say not as I do type of argument. Yeah, your parents tell you not to smoke while they're smoking a cigarette. Yeah, I don't. I, yeah, I don't. I don't know, but that's that's what that's what that kind of talk reminds me of. But I mean, it, that's it's just special pleading, is what it is. It's saying God's morality is absolute, but even He doesn't have to abide by His own morality because because He's He's above His morality. 
But then his morality isn't absolute. Like, it's... Yeah. Yeah, it's conditional or, yeah. I don't know, maybe situational. These yeah, things I, are morally absolute unless you're me. Right, right. Don't kill unless I tell you to. Yeah. That's not moral absolutism. I, yeah, I, 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 um, I think it's strange. So, um, I, I think that, uh, um, I should get that, I should get his, his book. I don't even know if it's out yet, but, um, Sam Harris is working on a, on a, on a project to apply the scientific method to morality. And I think that's a great idea. And, um, and, you know, and here's, and, and here's where I think the, the difference, um, happens when 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 they talk about when when when, when rabbi what's his name uh eric h yofi yeah when, when rabbi yofi is making these these comparisons and parallels in one instance i think that the that the interpretive nature of the constitution is a good parallel right and and then he but then he but then he talks about like like science wouldn't do a good job of of interpreting or um or or, or look, looking at questions of morality, and uh and I and I disagree with that, and uh and and I and I think because, um. When when he looks at like when he looks at the the Bible as an interpretive document like the Constitution, it, it's literally saying like, well one day this is wrong and then tomorrow we'll have another interpretation of it and then then it'll be right again or it'll be wrong again or right again it goes both ways right and. Mm-hmm. And and I don't I don't know I just maybe maybe I'm missing the the subtlety and the nuance, whereas when you apply the scientific method to a question, right, we get gravity, and and we all agree that gravity works. And then if you if you look further, um, you get relativity, and relativity is a new interpretation of the data. It's a new interpretation, but it doesn't invalidate the old interpretation. It just provides a deeper understanding of it. So, so relativity didn't invalidate gravity. It just meant that gravity is right, and now we understand it even better to include relativity. Mm-hmm. And I and I think that um, that these biblical interpretations literally are 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 night and day, and one invalidates the other. Yeah. I think I follow you. Take that, Rabbi Yoki. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I mean, also, like, on the Harris thing, I haven't read Harris's book, so I'm not exactly... I've, I watched him do a TED Talk about it, but I'm not I'm not entirely convinced by him. Uh, I don't know what science has to say about morality. Because it, it's fairly it's fairly new idea. Um, um, it, it, it's... I don't, I don't think it's a new idea. I mean, it, the idea of... Um, there's a um, there's a Wikipedia article on the science of morality and and they um and it, it's it's been around it's been people have been thinking about it for a long time, uh, but uh, one of Rabbi Yofi's objections to a scientific approach to morality is that we never get anywhere because you can't make any scientific decisions without data and then you know like we have to go through this whole experimental process and then um and then it has to be published in peer reviewed journals and you know he's sort of like i don't know i think that's kind of a straw man argument uh yeah i mean it definitely is um but i mean that's it's someone i would say batting out of his league i don't know what his background is but i'm sure he probably doesn't have a phd in science maybe he's a lawyer i don't know <laughs> yeah. yeah he's the president of the uh union for reformed judaism um, you know, what, let's look him up. Let's look him up right you know, now. Yeah, he he did seem to have some some progressive ideas, but but I just think that his whole argument of of moral absolutes subject to interpretation of biblical text just just goes off the rails. Wow, is it hot in here? Or is it me? You're pretty hot. It's warm in here. <laughs> um. Is it hot in here, or is it just me? Hey, we're both from Massachusetts. Well, you've already, you've already taken off your pants, so yeah, yeah, right. Right. I mean, we're all sitting around. Not it doesn't pants. say what he what he does. That's what heathens yeah. do. And speaking of what Put heathens do, while well, he's looking up that tonight is meetup. We get to oh hang yeah, out tonight's meetup night. Well, tonight tonight is meetup night. <laughs> 
Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm looking forward to it. It should be good. It should be, be good. Fun. It, it'll be fun. I wonder how many people are going to show up. I don't know. Hopefully a whole bunch. Six? Be awesome. At least six. Six. <laughs> At least six, yes. Yeah. Um, Maybe we've been forgotten about. Okay. <laughs> it doesn't say um, what his background's in, but... I mean, he he's definitely, like, he writes well. He's definitely a smart man, but... Um, being smart doesn't mean you're an expert in it doesn't necessarily mean you're right either yeah exactly uh but uh you you posted a number of other links in here too well those uh, those are kind of the, those were the um yeah if, if you want to if you want to <laughs> find out what crazy sounds like just go to the answers in genesis website i love it and um and and they have their apologetics and their arguments about um um you know how biblical text is the source of moral absolutes and and you know at least they stick to their guns at least they say like well it's not about interpretation because they believe in the inerrant inerrancy of the bible um and and so but they make this bizarre they make that argument that that god exists outside of morality and since we are his creations that that we have to you know abide by his word not the other way around, I guess. I yeah. Know. And, um, you know, reading reading the way they put it, I don't want to live in that world. I wouldn't want to live that life. You know, uh, all right. Just skimming through. And, I mean, this is this is the, uh, you know, the biblical inerrantist, like, you know, song and dance routine is essentially what this whole website is. It's You want um, crazy apologetics with apologists who, like... They pretend to be scientists. They do. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, these are the people who are all about intelligent design. Um, but he, I, I'm just noticed that the quote from uh, Romans two fifteen, which is um, here, they're, they're paraphrasing. So I'll actually pull up what Romans two eighteen says. Uh, Romans, where are you? Right here, two eighteen. Uh, Romans two eighteen. And you know, uh, and know his will, and approve what is excellent, because you are instructed from the law, um, which is not what they quoted. Did they get their footnote wrong? Yeah, I mean it's it's kind of the same thing. They say uh, we inherently know this ultimate standard of right and wrong because God has written His law on our hearts. Oh, it's two fifteen. Sorry. I was looking at two eighteen. See now that that um that that ascribes any inner sense of right and wrong, those ideas that we regard as is is human nature or the best of human nature, they attribute that to a divine being. Where where evolutionary yeah. biology and a lot of social sciences have now shown that that's not true. We we've evolved a sense of right and wrong. We, our, our sense of right and wrong comes from our ability to empathize, and, and that is an evolved trait. Yeah. I mean, we're, we evolved, to, and I mean, they hate this because they don't believe in evolution, but we evolved as social animals. Primates are inherently social animals. We live in large groups, and empathy helps that social cohesion. If everyone's a lying, murdering scumbag, society isn't going to get very far because yeah. no one's going to trust one another and trust well, is essential for survival especially in the early stages of society in 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 the other in the other link on on the answers in genesis they they make an argument about how um evolution the the very idea of evolution defeats morality and since we are moral creatures Evolution must be wrong, and creationism is right. That, that's kind of that's kind of how the logic goes. Yeah. And, and I, and you know, I, like reading those arguments, I you can tell when they're making a bad argument because they'll say it just does it just makes sense, or it just doesn't make sense, right? Yeah. Um, I'll have you know that when you when you get into the best of science, you're looking at something and you go, man, that is really hard to make sense of. Like the best science is difficult and it's hard to make sense of it and, and and as soon as soon as some biblical inerrantist looks at i don't know biblical scripture and and says it just makes sense 
you know they've got it wrong. Doesn't that make sense? <laughs> you got it wrong. Uh, those guys drive me up a wall. You're getting me spun up again this morning. Yeah. <laughs> um, I would like to see what you do okay. without. I don't, want be, I don't want to be known as like Bob the Angry Atheist. Yeah, right. It's Too late. We already have t-shirts. <laughs> That's okay. It says here you can't be mad because it's just, you know, if we are all nothing more than complex chemical reactions. It's all right to be mad. Well, you know, that's, God that, gave that's you an that. interesting point in there, too, because they, cause they, they talk about determinism. And, um, and, um, and you know, there is, there is schools of thought that think that, 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 are, that are looking at that um, the choices you make, you kind of didn't have much choice in them to begin with. Um, but, you know, that, that is yet to be determined. And, but, but I disagree that, that, that knowing that doesn't absolve you of responsibility. I think that knowing that empowers you to make better choices. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I've always been torn apart. Like, I find the whole determinism thing interesting because you can go either way with it, the religious way or the scientific way. And, I mean, you can derive sort of determinism from either one but um i like free will i like the idea of free will yeah no it's the it, you know it's part of the deterministic nature of of this idea of god's mm-hmm. plan that's the part that, that that's the one idea that just really spins me up the most all right i i because we're getting on the the um deterministic just, track yeah, determinism the will should track. be another day i i just want to i just want to bring up one thing i heard yesterday and it's it's fresh in my mind um it's this question um, does free will exist in heaven? To ask a Christian, does free will exist in heaven? Because if it, either yes or no, you have a problem. <laughs> because if free will does exist in heaven, then God figured out a way to create a world that is perfect with free will minus sin. If no, then... Apparently, it's fine to have everyone sans free will and still have a perfect place. That's an interesting thought. So why did God create Earth with... I mean, it, it gets into like the theodicy question, the root of evil, but like, where does, where does sin come into play that we have to have sin? Yeah, well, if there's free will, then, then people are free to rape and murder in heaven. Um, but not necessarily like if there's free will in heaven but those things just aren't just don't happen then there's a perfect universe and God didn't need to create the earth the way he did you see like it, it gets this you get this backlash yeah no I, I agree that's a that's a that'll, that'll I don't know no, I wonder, I wonder, what, the, I wonder what the apologetics the, answer to that is. That's another. That's he another created. Thing. The, he created. It's you're the damned earth. if you do, damned if you don't. I mean, like, no matter which you, which you pick. I think. The, I think the apologetics, like the apologetics answer, would be something like, "Well, we can't know." And yeah, right. We can't know the nature of God. Like, well, I, decide. Pick one. Yeah, right. No, it's it's a it's a velvet rope syndrome. He created Earth. So only the selected few can actually come into the perfect world. Yeah, but I mean, it's still the, the point that the perfect world exists and either has free will and there's no problem or doesn't have free will and there's no problem. So why even create Earth? To create the velvet rope. So you can be in the elite club. The elite club? You have to, you have to pass the test here on yeah. Earth. The, the idea with the velvet rope is, I don't know what's on the other side of the velvet rope, but there's a velvet rope, and I want to be on the yeah. other side. <laughs> yeah, right. Because something's got to be good <laughs> over yeah. there. It, it must be awesome. They got a velvet rope. There's a line. And a line of people <laughs> waiting to get in. Um, are you on the list? Oh, you are. Oh, Come on, you are. Come on <laughs> yeah. in. I mean, that's yeah. what it is. That's what they <laughs> You have to, you St. Have, Peter's just standing <laughs> up there. With like He's like a big bouncer. He's got black sunglasses on. You're not on the list. Well, that's what they say. You gotta, you know, on Judgment Day, you, if you're on the list, you can enter the enter the gates. Which the gates are, the velvet rope. I'm just saying, <laughs> it's a party that you don't want to miss. <laughs> or so I've heard. Yeah, I heard it's gonna be awesome. I don't know. It sounds kind of crappy. Yeah. yeah you, <laughs> you get to for all eternity. For all eternity. 
sit there and worship God. Sounds like a bundle of joy. That sounds fun. Um, you know, one of the one of the interesting points about the about the morality argument is that is that from a scientific standpoint, right? The they're they're still hashing out like definitions and operative terms, and so I think the one that everybody sort of agrees on at this point is that morality are those social constructs which um, limit or prevent the suffering of others. It has to do with with, with suffering, and um, and but but I think where it breaks down in the discussion between secularists and theologians. Is that in the, the in the theology of evaluate or, or when a theologist evaluates morality, he is taking into account an afterlife. He he's weighing the facts that what happens in this world will have a bearing or impact in some afterlife, defined by his religious beliefs. Whereas a scientific approach to it. You you can't you can't consider an afterlife. You can only consider the here and now. Mm-hmm. And and you know like how how are they going to find common ground that way? I don't I don't think you can. No, um, I mean because your you know like like your available data pool is, is yeah, it's zero. <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> um, but right, but I mean like and and so uh, you know the 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 believer is going to place a lot of value on this idea of an afterlife and it's going to it's going to color their opinions and dictate their actions whereas the the secularist the atheist is going to consider those moral questions in the here and now only in this world this life because that's really all we get yeah and i mean that's what they um i think it was rabbi yofi says this uh where is it oh god because he says something about I mean, what about, you know, you talk about suffering. What about those, you know, those early um, Christian sects? Like, what were they? Were they, were they the ascetics or something like that? that Which ones? Um, they, they, they gave away all their possessions oh, yeah. and forsake, yeah, yeah. you know, all of their earthly goods and their money. And, and, and they suffered. They suffered terribly. Yep. But it was like their suffering bought them the ticket to the afterlife. And then I know that there are some, um, there's like the, um, uh, what are those groups, like the Amish or the Quakers or something like that in, in um, rural Pennsylvania. Like, like sort of their religious belief is the worse you have it on in this life, the better your life in the afterlife will be. And hence they forego all modern conveniences. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean in the, but you know what, I have, I have a little bit of respect for the, uh, for the Amish because they stick to it. Like they and have, they have rake they fights. Say, <laughs> they have rake fights. <laughs> they had a rake fight. <laughs> um, you know, they they stick to it. Like they have that, and like that's like there's there's very little, um, from what I see, hypocrisy in what they do. Like they are incredibly nonviolent. Well, they okay, keep it themselves. Fine. I mean, you're right, but but uh, I, I was like, well, they're okay. Yeah. You know, fine. You were. You were consistent, but you were wrong. I don't know. Consistently wrong is worse than wrong, I, I guess. I don't know. I shouldn't be. I can't. You can't pick on the Amish, man. I, I, I enjoy consistency. Regardless of right or wrong, I'll, I'll, I enjoy right, consistency. People don't even do that because if somebody's always right, people get pissed at it. How does it feel to be always be right? It yeah. feels good. <laughs> it's awesome. It feels fucking awesome. Um, now, I'm not always right. I'm wrong <laughs> sometimes. I think I was wrong last week. I just wanted to get to it. <laughs> you, you were just long, wrong sometime last week. Yeah. What are you referring to on the show? No, nah, I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm just being... um, but, you know, you, like, you think about those cultures, um, you know, like, like the Amish or the Quaker, their morality is is defined by their belief in, in this afterlife, which sure. I, my belief or my belief or my belief is that it doesn't exist. And so far, the evidence shows that it doesn't exist. So, 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 so their their morality is guided by a a false premise. You know, um, my morality is guided by I the invisible say, pink dragon that lives in my garage. But yeah, that doesn't I wouldn't make it say right. the evidence points to it doesn't exist. I would say the lack of evidence gives reason to not believe. 
thank you for being more elegant. Than yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's just a nuanced. You're so wrong. It's, it's a nuanced position that you have to like. I mean, I appreciate the nuance. Uh, thank yeah. you. You're welcome. <laughs> um, like I, I don't, I don't believe in evolution. I accept the fact that it's real. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, know. I, have a, I have a problem with the word belief. No, I, I agree because when I hear people in the evolution creation debate and like, which do you believe, evolution or creationism? I'm like, ah, oh, it's not about belief. Yeah, belief is belief in evolution is is a, it's kind of a misnomer. It's an oversimplification. I agree. Yeah. It's you. Know. But it's important. You don't want to give more ammunition. <laughs> I know. I, I know. I know. Somebody's probably listening to me now, and they're gonna catch me tripping up on something. Or they're going to see me sneeze again. You don't want the internet trolls to jump all over. Oh, God. So I'm sure they will. I'm sure I'm giving them a hundred things already where they're going to go, ha ha, see? Yeah. Caught Speaking you. of which, please send us stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, We're hoping to get some hate mail soon. <laughs> I know. I want I want the hate mail. The hate mail. Um, Jason, are you looking up Bible verses? No. He's looking up Iceland for some reason. <laughs> We're going to continue our discussion about Iceland after the show. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, about the fairies and the... Oh. Yeah, that's that's a strange thing about What's Iceland. this? The, the... On the Talking Dead last week, um, or actually this week, I don't even know what, what week we're in, um, we, ta- we had a small discussion about how in Iceland that 90% of the population believes in fairies, you know, l- little creatures. Which I don't and, think they do. That's fucking awesome. And Bob doesn't think that they do because they're they're the highest. Um, they have one of the highest nice literacy li- yeah. rates in the world. And he said because of that fact that they can't believe in, in fairies and other myth- mythical creatures. I think a nation with a literacy rate that high is is going to have an appeal to reason just built into their culture. <laughs> I could be wrong. You could have a high literacy rate and only read the Bible. Well, that's what Paul. That's <laughs> what Paul said. He goes, "Well, um, the the Bible." I mean, I bear in mind, like in the Middle Ages, the most literate people were monks. We're not in the Middle Ages anymore. Well, some places feel like it. <laughs> and the reason, well, the reason is not one of those. The reason those <laughs> those people were literate, and the only thing they read was the Bible, because that was the most the only book that was produced. Yep. If but you read, they the, were the ones that produced it. <laughs> right, I know. That's what I'm saying. The, the, the reason the only book they read was the Bible is because that was the only book lying around. <laughs> oh. I promise you, if they'd have had Origin of a Species lying around, they'd have read that too. Why would you, anybody want to read that? Or they would have burned it. I don't it's know. So boring. <laughs> the only good one is the one that, um, not camping. Why did I always get Harold camping and a Ray Comfort? Ray Comfort, yeah, mixed up. I, I don't know. know why. I know. I was uh, <laughs> all right. So, as most people, if you've been watching, so have gleaned um i'm moving and uh my girlfriend and i we were were packing up books and stuff and uh we were giving away a whole ton of books like so many books were giving away um and she grabs a stack of books and she's like these are going away right and i was like fuck no they're not like (laughs) there's like um pre-nicene new testament in there you just got that one i know and like um origin of species with ray comfort's introduction and i was like that you paid a penny for yeah i paid a penny for it Plus three ninety nine shipping, so I paid four dollars for it. Um, oh, right. That's where they get you. You know, <laughs> two Ermin books were in the stack. I was like, no, 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 those aren't going anywhere. Um, the one Bible I have left in hard format. Mm. Yeah. So right, the point being that, that, that if they'd have had those books lying around, they'd have read them too. Sure. No. Now, now I we guess. live I mean, in they the could have read the it. ponderance I mean, of books. Yeah, and there's still so much crap out there. Oh, yeah. That's why you have to apply reason and logic to figure out the the crap from the stuff that's worth reading. Although sometimes it's fun to read the crap. I'll give you that. I had had a good time reading the Answers in Genesis stuff this morning. (laughs) It's a fun little exercise in uh, 
trying to get through without smashing they have a, your um, computer. Yeah, they have a um, they have an answer about uh, unicorns in the Bible too. Oh, do they? Yeah. Oh, uh, aren't you so glad we covered that last I, week? I, I am. Which which is it was interesting and um and I, I and I agree. It's silly that it's there, but at the same time, um, after reading the apologetics about it, I, I don't. Cons- it, it might not be damning evidence if that's the right word um because right because somebody told me was it you that said something about like when marco polo first saw the rhinoceros he said uh he there's there's some comment where he he was like like i'd always wanted to see a unicorn i just didn't think they'd be so ugly (laughs) yeah So, you know, yeah. and like anything with one horn, you could have regarded as a unicorn. So there's like a one-horned rhinoceros. And, and, and I've seen one guy make the argument that, you know, if you look up in an um, in a old dictionary, sort of unicorn and rhinoceros were almost interchangeable. <laughs> and uh, Sorry, I just found something really funny. Right, and then, and then they point to this, and which is weird too. Like, why would they point to it in the um, in Answers in Genesis? They point point to what is that animal called it's the um uh, oh, the elasma therium yeah. w- which is basically like a it was kind of like a grazing animal with one big horn and and there's evidence for it in the fossil record which answers in genesis doesn't accept so they 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 pull an animal out of the fossil record to defend the inerrancy of the bible but then at the same time they dispute the fossil record to defend the inerrancy of the Bible. Yeah. I'm confused. I hate them. I know, I know. They're a pain in the ass. You're saying they but actually I just read. referred to the, the fossil yeah, there, record. There's a, there's, and a, then, there's a prehistoric animal called the Elasmotherium and, and there's a picture of it there and it's, it's yeah. basically like a, it looks like a, kind of like a rhinoceros but with a really big horn. And, um, and, and I don't know, I think that it was like 200 to 50 million years ago that they believed that it existed. But that falls way outside of the yeah the, the realm of um, young earth creationism, which is only like, what, 50,000 years old at yeah. best? Well, they, they probably believe that it lived 5,000 so, years ago. So, so essentially what they do is to defend the inerrancy of the Bible and defend the fact that the word unicorn appears in there, they, they point to this prehistoric animal, the Elasmotherium, and go like, look, see, in the fossil record, there's this animal. And then, but, but, but then when you bring up creationism, they go, oh, the fossil record's crap. You can't believe that. <laughs> yeah. Well, they, they want it both ways, you know? That's exactly what they want is both yeah. ways. That, that, and that drives me up a wall, I, too. I just love this because, I, I'm sorry, I just saw this, and they're talking about animals with one horn. Um, uh, an animal with one horn, the monoceros, which is the word that appears in... Um, uh, the name is often applied to the rhinoceros. Which, uh, I, I guess, kind of. Same root, seros. Um, but the sea unicorn is a fish of the whale kind. Whales are fish. Was... They're mammals. <laughs> don't, get, don't get me started. Um, card, called the narwhal. Um, is remarkable for growing a horn out at his nose. It's not a horn. It's not it's a, a horn. Tooth. It's a tusk. Yeah, and sometimes they have two of them. Um, yeah, anyway, I thought of the answers in Genesis. They yeah. had an answer. They they had an answer about uh, yeah. an argument about why the word unicorn appears, and um, and so that would that would presuppose that that um, the writers of the New Testament were aware of this animal. That I don't think ranged in in where the where the New Testament or the Old Testament writers lived. I don't know. It could be maybe. That's what I'm trying to look up now. Um, we just totally got so far off track. But that's okay. Well, no, this is really interesting. It's and covering something. And then this other guy, he has this really slickly produced video about um, why unicorn appears in the Bible, and and um. And he brings up the rhinoceros again, and he makes some mention that like there's the um, there's a two horned variety of rhinoceros that has a larger horn in front and a smaller horn in back, mm-hmm. and it's supposed to represent like the the in this 
instance, the biblical text is supposed to represent this animal with the two horns representing the these two brothers, um, the lesser and the greater, and uh, it 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 seemed like a lot of apologetic spin doctoring. So I don't know. I have to look into it more. Apologetic spin doctoring? Never. Never. Never um, would that happen. Yeah, no, happen. it looks like they lived in um, in Eurasia. But, I mean, no. Because <laughs> they were dead a long time ago. And, I mean, these are all very late references in, in the Bible. I mean, they, they believe that everything was written exactly when it says it was written. But it's Isaiah... 34 7 so it's probably written well like i mean like i said so, so so at the end of the day i'm like well hey there is a large grazing animal with one horn the elasmotherium it's in the fossil record we we know it existed yeah. it probably looked like this it probably lived around this time it's possible that somebody could have seen it and remembered it and wrote it down and then and it, and it appears in the bible but that doesn't mean that that validates the inerrancy of the bible it just means that Maybe in this one instance, somebody applied the right word to the right animal at the right time. I don't know. What about rainbows? Rainbows are God's work, man. That that rainbows are a symbol to remind us that he's sorry for the flood. Yeah. Yep. Yep. It says he'll, he promises he'll never flood us again. Except um, in New Orleans. Except in New Orleans. That, that's the city of sin. Except, yeah. Except in Japan. <laughs> Except in my neighborhood every time it fucking sprinkles. <laughs> it drizzles for too long and my entire neighborhood floods. Um, so, all right, to get back onto morality. Morality. Um, now that we've talked about unicorns. Unicorns are fun to talk about, man. It is. Um, but, you know, um, I don't know, it, it's... I like when fantastic animals appear in in the Bible, like in uh, I forget. Oh God, it's one of the infancy gospels. It's an apocryphal work, but um, baby Jesus on his way. I think it's into Egypt, like when he has to run away from Herod. Apparently, um, Jesus fights a dragon as a as like a small child. Maybe it's coming back because he's like a child and fights a dragon. I like I like that idea of like kid Jesus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just that cracks me up. <laughs> uh, you have to read the the book that I recommended when we first started the show. Yeah, yeah. about Jesus's longtime friend or something. Yeah, like yeah. That. Um, Biff, the gospel, oh, uh, the gospel right. according to Biff, Christ Which Childhood Pal. Book club. It's on the book club. Yeah. Read it. It is hilarious. It's one of my favorite books. Um, but back to moral values, like. The Bible has a lot of commandments in it that, like I said earlier, morally reprehensible. And I think, like, if the Bible gets such basic things wrong on morality, then you can't base your morality around it. Like, you you can't. Like, we know, we like, know, what, slavery is wrong. So what is so what is the what is the Bible verse? I just I just pulled a couple out at random. Um, I, I wrote all the show notes like five minutes before started recording. So these are the first like uh, five that popped off the top of my head. And the first is Leviticus twenty five forty four, which is the commandment that you can own slaves so long as you buy them from the nations that border you. So, like, here in America, we can own people from the Caribbean, Mexicans, um, Canadians. Well, I, I, I read that I read that passage, and I, I thought it, what I got out of it was, was basically it says slavery is okay as long as they're not other Jews and other not other uh, yeah, Israelites. Essentially, because essentially. he's talking to the Israelites, he's like, yeah, okay, get some slaves. Don't get them from home. You got to get them from around around you. Yeah. Don't make them to be. Don't make them Israelites. Yeah, I mean, and that's probably what the original intention was. Was like, slaves fine, um, not of the Jews, please. But but doesn't that doesn't that fall back to the um, doesn't it fall into that ground we were talking about how like how do you define in groups and out groups whatever religion they are whatever and those religions those nations those those Old Testament nations they were defined by their by their religion and so um, same religion good guy other religion bad guy kill yeah. them make them your slave and I mean sometimes it was very it was very nuanced and very small things that made them the bad guy because uh you had the israelites 
But then you had the Samaritans. And the Samaritans were like, I, they were cousins. They practically the same religion. Uh, the Edomites, the Ammonites, uh, the Moabites, like fucking Canaanites if you go back far enough. Um, all practically the same religion. Just slight differences. Didn't like them. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny how a small thing will set them apart. But as long as you're in the out group, then it's okay to kill and enslave. But it's not uncommon, going back to your thing, saying how if a document um, gets moral values completely wrong, how can we base our foundation on that? I mean, we do that today. Our constitutions, the founders of our constitutions, that, you know, when um, they spoke against slavery, had slaves right now. In Florida, we're going to talk about it on this week's this non uh, this non religious this way we are the new architects is in Florida right now. There are people being chained to trucks, tractors, and inside houses, and being forced to work with no pay to pick, pick potato uh, tomatoes. Um, slavery exists, and we support it because we support certain documents. We support the enjoyment of eating chocolate, and ninety percent of all chocolate is slave slave produced we eat when we eat tomatoes in the in the winter time we're eating we're supporting a document that supports slavery abuse and no, no, I, I, I disagree with that I, I think that uh I think that the Constitution abolishes slavery and, and, but right, it, when, when the Constitution was written George Washington Thomas Jefferson they were slave owners and um, most Jeffersonian scholars agree that when they say in the Constitution all men are created equal, they meant all white English men. They meant that at the time. Yeah. But 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 we admit the mistake. We made the change. We've moved on and past it. But what I'm saying is that his initial statement was that you know you cannot if you're going to base your moral values on a moral flawed document. Um, but, but we the, do that. We, okay, we, right. We've done that. No, no. The, the Constitution is not a source of morality. It is the it is the source of law, which is different. But why is slavery wrong? Well, slavery 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 is wrong because of morality. Slavery is illegal based on the law. Based on the morality that pushed the law through. Well, morality may morality may in may um what's the term um it may be the source but morality can influence law yeah um but law doesn't necessarily influence morality um yeah uh then why would you have it if it doesn't i mean because if you, if you have to make a law to say it's wrong you're enforcing morality because you have to set up a law to people who believe that slavery is right to, to force them not no, to do it, it's an, so you're pushing morality. That, that well, brings up an interesting point, and I and I and I think it's I think it's important to 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 cover it. Um, morality informs law, but not all laws are moral. True, and, and just and, like all, with all the teachings in the Bible and all the the morals are. And, and so, but but to say that but but to say that morality is 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 derived from from the, the constitution i think is is a is a misstep because the constitution doesn't define morality i i don't gain moral absolutes from from the constitution the constitution defines law it's different but and, but and now here's where it gets funny is because people get their morality from the bible and they say that that is god's law and it, and and i think that that that's a mistake too but uh um, w with terms of slavery, yes, at one time in the United States, slavery was legal. We have, you know, through uh, I don't know a, a process of 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 law and legislature, and and you may even it might even be like maybe a, um maybe there's a scientific basis to it, right? Science informs the morality that we've determined slavery is wrong. We've de we've we've all decided that slavery is wrong in all cases, and so. And so our laws reflect such thought. Oh, we believe that they do because they still exist here in the states. Um, that doesn't make it legal. The funny thing it is, it's what is well, legal I, about? I it? mean, we can we can we can get into the details on that on on the New Architects, but um, it happens and it's 
oh, well, lots of things happen that are illegal, but they still happen. That does, just because they happen doesn't make it legal or right. But, yeah, true, true, but certain politicians, certain economic factors allow it to continue. That doesn't make it right or legal. No, I understand, but I'm just saying just because we, we have right, the but, but I want to make it very clear. <laughs> Slavery, uh, based on the law of the land in the United States of America, slavery is illegal. Yep. That that we all agree yeah. on that, right? And so, if I were to have someone chained in my basement doing dishes, and I'm not paying them, and I'm keeping them against their will, I could be arrested. You could be. Now I might not be because maybe I know somebody who is protecting me or who is who is um is is, uh, you know, hiding that fact because it's an embarrassment to them. I'll agree, those things happen, but that doesn't make it right or legal. Yeah. And, and, and I, I and mean, I, it does, well. And, and, and so, look, you're talking about, like, like um, slavery and migrant labor. Because it happens doesn't mean that it's right or that doesn't mean that it's legal. It means that we need to be aware of it and stop it because it is wrong and we're empowered to stop it because it is illegal yeah because because morality doesn't empower me to to do anything law does right if i believe Mm -hmm. that if i believe that drinking is immoral that doesn't mean that i can stop you from doing it even if we all agree that it's immoral the mormons agree that it's immoral it's the law of god you cannot drink but they can make no laws p- prohibiting you from doing so. They can't, but they can encourage politicians and whatever. Right, but, but my, of- my point being is that is that the moral codes and the law of the whatever divine being doesn't necessarily reflect the legal laws. Yeah. But because of those beliefs is what paves the way for it well yeah they do i mean and 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 some of them have been tried right prohibition was tried because they thought that it was immoral and maybe we should legislate against it people did it anyway and then they they changed the law that's why there are amendments to the constitution the constitution changes the bible doesn't change it depends who you talk to well (laughs) that's true We, we did talk about how the bible changes but um since the since the King James version of the Bible, they've stuck with it pretty consistently. Yeah. Yeah. Minor but, changes in translation. But, that's but about there it. will be no there will be no addition to the Bible where um that everybody will accept where we go like, Yeah, okay, we're gonna take out all of the uh creation stuff and we're gonna include evolution in it and we're gonna have my new revised evolution Bible. And that's well, kinda, no, that's they, they don't they don't have to do that the Bible. They have they have the teachers who do that. Although they you know, have, didn't they Jefferson have, um isn't there the Jefferson, the Jefferson Bible where the he Jefferson took out Bible. all the magic stuff? Yeah. yeah. It, it was just a copy of the New Testament, but he took out anything that was miraculous. I mean, yeah. Because he believed Jesus was a cynic philosopher. That's true. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the Bible does have the Bible has gone through like iterations and revision, but it, it's not amended in the way that the Constitution is. Which, because the people don't have the say. <laughs> well, right, right. Yeah, I mean, whoever makes the changes in the, in biblical text is the one who's already we didn't in power. Get a say in it. <laughs> yeah. the, the amendments that were made to the Constitution were voted on and approved, and, yeah. and I think that's a difference too. Yeah. Cool. We're arm wrestling. Get me upset, yep. man. <laughs> <laughs> Drink some more coffee. All right. Um, Bob, the angry atheist. Yep. We're, we're going to make t-shirts with pictures of Bob on there. Saying that he says, I'm angry. Just angry ath- atheist. I'm going to do my metal face. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's for the metal mind. Although I did, I did like shave the beard and trim again with with uh, with the the metal show in mind. I was, like, I was like, oh man, I got the metal show coming up. I'm going to get the, the metal beard going on. <laughs> Woo. Um, okay, uh, more morally reprehensible things, moral values from the Bible, morally reprehensible. First Timothy three twelve endorses misogyny. It says that uh, who does it? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it says, "Ye shall get back in the kitchen, make me a sandwich." <laughs> <laughs> no, um, did you say says, a sandwich because you got a sandwich last time? Yeah, what the hell? It was delicious. It was delicious. <laughs> Um, 
1 Timothy 3, 12. Timothy is a really misogynistic document. Um, let deacons um, each be the husbands of one wife. Manage- oh, wait. Where is 1 Timothy 3? It's the 2 Timothy 3, 12? I, don't know. I think it's 2 Timothy 3, 12. Where are you? Got my thing wrong. Let's see. It's in First Timothy. Maybe it's in Second Timothy. First Timothy. <laughs> so how are you, Bob? <laughs> I'm well. Are we gonna hug after this? I can't. Have you keep your pants on? It's in Timothy. Um, so there's a Timothy verse. <laughs> Just gotta find it. Do, do, do. You guys go back to arguing about slavery. <laughs> we were not arguing about slavery. I do not support slavery. <laughs> I, I mean, I do not either. And, and uh, and um, but you know, so you, you bring up like chocolate, right? Yep. Um. Uh. And um, uh, and there's that there is that that idea, and it's and it's it's that much of the chocolate that's it's not produced in the US it's, it's in the Ivory Coast any any Af- any chocolate that comes from Africa right. is guaranteed to be a f- um part of slave labor forced labor right right but people buy it anyway because they don't know but even even when they do know i can i can give an example i'm not going to mention any places but there's a place that i worked recently that sells large amounts of chocolate I brought to their attention, sat down, talked to them, and said, okay, this is what we're going to do. This is slave chocolate. This is why it's slave chocolate. This is what you have in your store, and this is what you're supporting in your store. And they were like, oh, my God, we're getting rid of all of it. We're going to take it out of the stores, get it off the shelf, and donate it somewhere that can make money that, that would help benefit them. Right. All right. So we removed all the chocolate from the store. And then the owner of the store is like, yeah, we're just going to sell it at one of our stores. We're not going to sell it at this store um, because we're still going to make money. I was like, well, don't you understand that what's going on? And they're like, yeah, we don't care. Well, <laughs> that, right. So, and so and they, they know. Don't, they don't care. But that, but that. If you ever, ever, if you know something and you truly believe that slavery is wrong, if you truly believe that child labor is wrong if you truly believe something is wrong and you know for a fact that it exists and you continue to make profit you continue to support it and you continue to do things that keep it alive then you are as guilty as those fuckers that are chaining the people to the i i I agree they're they're just as culpable but um but the problem is that that we live in a in a global economy and buy your chocolate from south america Fine, but people. But I'm not saying I'm not saying they're they're right to do what they did. In, in, in fact, I agree with you; they're wrong. What I'm saying is they're able to do th- what they did because the laws here don't necessarily apply in other nations. Because because then we what can't. about what about the tomatoes that are here in the United States? If you eat tomatoes from Florida, anytime, for tomatoes do not grow naturally in Florida. They are grown in sand. They are pumped full of chemicals just so they can grow. That's not slavery, though. But wait. they are, People who work on these farms that are sprayed with the pesticides, that are sprayed with all these chemicals that pick it, are chained to vehicles. They live in the back of the farm trucks. They, are, they live in trailer houses, 25 people deep, that are owned by the farms. And if they run away, there's reports after reports. I can show you. And we're going to talk about it on the New Architects tomorrow night. Um there's reports after reports that people who try to run away are beating, beaten so badly they are unrecognizable and barely are hanging on to their life. And their, their bodies are thrown in front of the rest of the workers and set out in the sun all day in Florida. As an example, this is what happens when you run away. Okay. That is slavery. That is forced but that, labor. But that, that, is, that doesn't and, all right. If you buy f- tomatoes from Florida – any time of the year, it doesn't matter if it's summer, winter, whatever. You are supporting that because that's the only way it happens in Florida. Oh, okay, and I'm not saying you're wrong. the The point is that is that the person buying the tomatoes in the grocery store now doesn't know, and the reason that that's allowed. Then to we continue, go back to the law, the rules of the law. 
ignorance of the law does not, you know, does not exclude you from it. No, no. Uh, <laughs> the person behind the, the tomatoes is aware that slavery is wrong and illegal. It's 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 they're aware they're unaware of their participation in it. True. And but but different. again, but again, a large majority of people, especially people who say they care, like the story we we're talking about before, when they find out, they still don't care because but, it's but inconvenient. It's allowed, it's allowed to continue because somebody's turning a blind eye to it. We and, are and all turning a blind eye to it. Now, not all of us, because until you brought it up today, I was unaware. Well, of no, it. I'm saying though is is we've we've gotten again. This is not even this is the other show. We'll talk about it, but it, in short, um, it is our responsibility to know what happens. You can't know everything all the time. Everything that you purchase, everything that you support, you it's up to you to realize, to find out. We be. live in the digital age. It's not that hard to figure out something. No, I agree. <laughs> I, and I, I agree. I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. What I'm saying is that... that um, Ignorance is bliss, and sometimes people are willfully ignorant. And, and if crimes are being committed and they're not being stopped, it's because people are turning a blind eye to it. There's a reason for it. And so, and so the, the, the person buying the tomatoes that's unaware of the situation, I don't agree is as culpable as the person committing the crime. No, I don't, I don't, I don't think if, if, we're, if we're putting a level of guilt the person committing the crime is more more guilty than the person but because of um you you, you not knowing about it and supporting it you need to know what you're going about can um, i be a guest on the new architect you sure can um we're going to have it we're going to have we're going to have actually several guests on the next show um but if just real quick just a precursor to the show uh, go to the website ciw-online.org um and that's the group in Florida trying to. Um, you can you can actually get the full list of everything. But this is a group that's trying to get these migrant workers out of these conditions. But um, again, if you if you want to know, learn more, it's a different show. Um, it's the New Architects Watch. We'll so, what did Timothy have to say about misogyny? <laughs> Sorry, he started this. Um, he I actually found it. I, I found a view. I was talk. trying to find it. Um, so it's First Timothy two twelve. Uh, I do not permit a woman to teach or to exercise authority over a man. Rather, she is to remain quiet. Um, and then there's these two wonderful... I love the Pauline epistles because they're funny. Um, 1 Corinthians 11.3 and Ephesians 5.23 both say that um, the husband is the head over the wife just as Christ the head over the church. Well, that's why that's why Michelle Bachman running for president. It's okay because her husband said you can do this. You can do it. Yeah. It's okay, honey. I, I, I'll, I approve. I approve. You, you can run for president. You for run president. for president. It's I'm okay. going to go... Um, Use Jesus to scare the gay out of people. Yeah, yeah, that's an interesting situation. <laughs> but I have to mention it's last call, guys. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, just really quick, um, Exodus twenty two eighteen endorses the killing of witches, which could be anyone from another religion, really. Um, uh, burning me's a witch. Deuteronomy twenty fourteen <laughs> endorses genocide, and Deuteronomy twenty two twenty three through twenty four endorses the killing of rape victims if they're raped within a city. Good times. Good so, times. Morally reprehensible. Those are just the, the five that came off the top of my head. Morally right reprehensible, and yeah. yet God says it's okay. Yeah. Well, um, who's it? Is it Dawkins that says that God is a moral monster? Oh, God. I used to have that quote. Oh, God. Do I still have it up? Why do you keep asking God? Like, but, but, but again, the, the believer just falls back on the, the notion that God. God is outside of morality, and anything he does is, is inherently good because I'm told that no, no. he is inherently good. I changed it. I used to have it up, but I changed my, my favorite quote on Facebook to be, there are two novels that can change a bookish 14-year-old's life, The Lord of the Rings and Atlas Shrugged. One is a childish fantasy uh, that often engenders a lifelong obsession with unbelievable heroes leading to an emotionally stunted, socially crippled adulthood unable to deal with the real world. The other, of course, involves orcs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it used to, it was something like, uh, the God of the Bible is the most unlikable character in all of fiction, jealous and proud of it, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. 
infanticidal. You know, when, when, I, when I was reading all of the the stuff about morality and how God God is the source of morality and the answers in Genesis thing, like I was looking at that, and I, I was just thinking to myself, like I don't want to live in that world, and I felt bad for the people that read that and believe it, like you know, like. That that uh, that whole thing, like God defines what's right and wrong, and God's watching you. He's watching you. Buy tomatoes. Yeah, I know. And he allowed those tomatoes to be grown. Yeah. <laughs> in sand in Florida. He allowed all those people to get fucked over by it. Oh, man. Found it. Found it. Really quick. Just run through it. Um, Come on. Uh, the God of the Old Testament is arguably the most unlikable... A most unpleasant character in all fiction. Jealous and proud of it. A petty, unjust, unforgiving, control freak. A vindictive, bloodthirsty, ethnic cleanser. A misogynistic, homophobic, racist, infanticidal, genocidal, filicidal, pestilential, megalomaniacal, sadomasochistic, capricious, malevolent bully. That so what are you trying sums to say? it up. Yep. Um, while I'm thinking about it, you know, we were looking into doing an episode of Buddhist Thought. And we were going to have a guest. The guest is not going to come on, so we're going to move along with that one. Well, I shelf mean, we, it. Can, we just. Yeah, I mean, we, we can, can shelf that her, topic. Right? We can we can do another show about it, but that one topic we can shelf it because going round and round with us three on that topic would just not get us anywhere. Well, I mean, I'm I'm not familiar with Vajrayana Buddhism, Tibetan Buddhism, um, but I practiced Buddhism for like almost ten years. Paul's into Buddhism, isn't he? No. No? Thought he was. Not that I know of. Ask him. <laughs> well, I, I think there's a lot of great I think he just... No, he's, be... he records the, the monks. Oh, okay. He's, he just does documentaries and sound and stuff for him. Oh, okay. He's not into... I mean, just, Buddhist thought has a lot of great things to say until, until you, until you, have you to get, get around the like, magic. Like, Buddha is magic. Yeah. And then, then it then it kind of falls apart. It doesn't mean that what they had to say earlier is invalidated. It's still yeah. it's still you know, um, it's still sound. I mean, I mean, just like just I mean, let's just let's face it. The, the golden rule is 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 biblical. No, right? great. Um, it, meh, not really. Um, I mean, the, you can glean things that are similar to it from there. Um, and I mean, I don't get me wrong. I think there are great things in the Bible, great things it has to say on certain things. Uh, Romans chapter 12 is awesome. It tells you it's the whole, like, sort of, you know, be nice regardless of people being assholes to you. Right. Um, you know, don't be vindictive or, you know, accusative or anything like that. Uh, you know, there are some great, like, Proverbs is, there are some great Proverbs, um, Right, so so so, how is it that that we're able to make value judgments on 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 things that are that are in the Old and New Testament, and we make those value judgments based on a morality of a text that's supposed to provide the morality? Yeah, um, I mean, when I say I like things out of the Bible, it obviously comes from the fact that I'm consider myself rational uh human being living in the 21st century you know i'm informed on concepts like the fact that slavery is wrong the fact that um you know misogyny uh yeah misogyny and sexism is wrong um but that means i have i have the luxury to literally pick and choose but then again i don't take the bible as the un like the inspired word of god that's completely right. inerrant I take it as a very old book that used to be considered law for a group of people. Some of it's good, some of it's bad. Um, I don't think it's inspired. My morality is defined by a 2,000-year-old Bronze Age book. Yeah, right? A like, barbaric Bronze Age book. Yeah. Awesome. My morality is not inspired by the mores of a nomadic people who are all illiterate living in the desert Some. 2,000 years ago. Yeah. I'm a little more refined than that. Yeah, so. slightly. I'm not. And I, uh, but yeah, I, did, I, did, I was the one that said uh, at, a, at one point, like, my moral compass is derived from X-Men comics. <laughs> but there's a lot of great stuff to be yeah. had there. Sure. <laughs> and we're going to have to talk Depends about that Depends on who next you time. identify with. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Apocalypse? Yeah. No, he's the bad guy. I know. You can identify the bad guy. But he's the bad guy for a reason. Yeah, but I mean, read Paradise Lost. 
bad guy's the good yeah, guy. That's true. Well, next Anti-heroes. time on this non-religious life is <laughs> the paradigms of <laughs> X Men comics. Yeah. Um, so. Now that we're done with that, we're done ranting back and forth, going completely off topic. Um, <laughs> what do you guys think? Uh, you know, fill us in, give us your thoughts, send us your hate mail, whatever, anything, really. Just contact us, please. We're lonely. We get uh, contacts all the time. We do, we do. Um, you can call us on the hotline, uh, 757-337-2195. You can email us, religious at zombie-popcorn.com you can like us on facebook facebook.com slash this non-religious life you can go to our itunes feed download all the episodes write a review write a review um and don't forget to take the survey on the right hand side of zombie-popcorn.com so you can uh you know tell us what you like what you don't like and we can you know grow the show a bit so i think that's just about everything um, unless you guys have any closing comments, no? no. I think Dawkins summed it up best. Yep. <laughs> I agree. It used to be my Facebook quote. Um, until I found the one about Ayn Rand, and I hate her maybe more than God. Because that one's funnier. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, I guess until next week, everybody. See you at meetup. Yep, meetup, meetup, meetup.